Now, I'm going to make this last video about gravity for a while. Well, people don't seem to understand that when you do Google what don't we know about gravity, out of all these, out of 311 million results, the number one, one answer is, however, if we are to be honest, we don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way. Now, I'm not going to focus on what they go on to say. We only know how it behaves. And then they go to tell you what they think it is. Uh, gravity is a force of attraction that exists between any two masses, any two bodies or particles. Now, this can't be demonstrated because you can park two cars next to each other and there is no attraction whatsoever. But more importantly, <coughs> this, is, this is the bottom line here that people have to ignore or either face reality and realize you have a low IQ, a medium, or high IQ. The reason why this answer, however, if we are to be honest, we don't know what gravity is in any fundamental way, the reason why that exists is because today, and for an alleged 500 plus years, gravity's been a theory. They cannot directly detect gravity itself, they cannot directly identify gravity itself, they cannot directly isolate gravity because once or if you could detect, identify, or isolate gravity itself, you could study it to find out exactly what it is and how it behaves. But they'll go on to tell you how it behaves after telling you they don't know what it is in any fundamental way, which is illogical. That is completely illogical, okay? To tell you they don't know, that would be like me saying, I don't know what the Bible is in any fundamental way, and then go on to give you a sermon and preach to you about God or the Bible. That is illogical. Now, why can't people understand that if gravity is holding, pulling, or curving over one quintillion gallons of water back towards the center of the earth, which would be all the lakes, the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, all the water on the outside surface of the earth covering the outside of a ball that's spinning faster than a bullet at the equator, gravity is said to be pulling, holding, or curving it back towards the center of the earth. Now, how can any force or occurrence of something other than a force or power, how could it do that? There would be a massive signature of energy every second that some force or occurrence was pulling, holding, or curving all that water back towards the center of the earth. It would employ presence and substance. Okay, you cannot do anything. I cannot hit a keyboard on this computer without the presence and substance of my hand, flesh and bone. Otherwise, it can't be done. Now, these people are going to say, however, if we are to be honest, we don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way. But they'll go on to tell you we only know how it behaves. That's a lie. <clears throat> because when something falls, that's not gravity. If a flashlight falls to the ground, it is a flashlight falling to the ground. It is not gravity. Okay? Gravity would be what is making that flashlight fall to the ground. Gravity would be an outside force or occurrence acting upon that flashlight to pull it down, curve it down, <coughs> or pull, hold, or curve, hold it back down. It would be an outside force or occurrence of some type of power or phenomena. But phenomena or not, it would have to possess presence and substance to interact, to engage or engulf that flashlight to pull it down or curve it down or hold it down towards the center of the earth. Now, I bring this up because well, my sister's fiancé was here and all he could reply is gravity. How does all that water stay on the outside surface of the earth? 
gravity. How do five layers of gaseous atmosphere not go into an infinite vacuum universe? Gravity. Everything he said was gravity. And I showed him this, and he was astounded. But then when I tried to explain why they have to say, however, if we are to be honest, we don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way. Then he started throwing theories at me, most of which he didn't truly understand or regurgitate or recount the way they should be thrown at someone. Okay, I I tried to point out to him, sir, you are using one theory to support another theory and you are going you you are doing a 180 degree turn from fact what from what could be demonstrated okay when you got to start using one theory to support another theory and another theory can't you realize what you're doing why is this so hard to understand it doesn't mean your whole reality is going to fall apart or you have to have a meltdown okay gravity is intangible it has no presence and substance of itself, and that is illogical if it is doing everything they say it's doing. I don't understand how it could be a theory for 500 plus years in today's alleged state of technology that we're in, that they say we have. There is no current field, wave, beam, ray, particle, graviton, or molecule of gravity in any known means of propagation of current, field, wave, beam, ray, or particle whatsoever. So, you have to start to believe somewhere in your mind that gravity is some kind of God. And then you have to admit that you are going to have faith in this false God. This, this is illogical. Gravity could not do the trillions of things they're saying it does. Hold every person, place, and thing, every grain of sand, particle of dirt. These are trillions of things it would have to hold, pull, or curve back to the center of the earth. And it has no directly detectable, it cannot be identified or isolated means to do it. Don't you people understand how illogical that is? And why would you call me ignorant for pointing that out? For saying that gravity obviously is not real. Because it is not. It has no presence or substance of itself. One guy just left me a post saying, well, what way does relative density propagate? First of all, relative density is not claimed to be a force. It is not claimed to be acting on a rock. It is the rock. Okay, it's weight. It's within that rock. It's density. It's weight. Falling through air. The air is not strong enough to support it, so it falls through it. There is no outside force or occurrence acting upon that rock. Okay, if they were saying that relative density did something like that, I'd be right here saying it can't be because there is no current field wave beam ray particle molecule of relative den density whatsoever. Okay, there is no outside force or occurrence whatsoever acting on anything falling down or maintaining people on the ground of the earth. Other people will say, well, if it's not gravity, you have to replace it. And you say that because that's the way you were programmed. There has to be a reason why we're not flying off the earth and floating away. And you can't understand that that belief exists because you think you are on the outside surface of a giant ball. Now what I'm saying is if we were on the outside surface of a giant spinning ball, then I would know for a fact there would be have to be a force or occurrence that made it possible, that kept us on it. Okay, there's no way that whatever force or occurrence it was 
that it could remain a theory like that, that not one iota of presence or substance of that force or occurrence can be detected, nor has ever been detected, identified, isolated, or studied, harnessed, nothing. How can it do that? How can it do everything we are told it does without any presence and substance of any type of form, of any known means of propagation? And, and they know they have a dumbed-down audience when they can say, however, if we are to be honest, we don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way. And then go on to tell you, we only know how it behaves. Okay, that is illogical. Because if you don't know what it is in any fundamental way, how can you tell me what it's doing, how it behaves? You're not telling me how gravity behaves. You're pointing at an object that's fallen and you're saying that's gravity. And that's a lie. It's not gravity. If it's a rock falling, it's not gravity. It's the rock falling. It's an object falling to the ground because its weight or density is more than its surrounding air, okay? And that rock will stop once it hits something that can support it. If the air was thicker and had more of what they want to call mass, then the rock would stop. It wouldn't fall through it. It's not gravity. A microphone falling is not gravity. It's a microphone falling. And they place so much emphasis on objects falling. Normally, if the truth were known that the earth is not a globe, you wouldn't think twice about an object falling, okay? But there's so much relevance placed on this because they are certifying in your mind that we are walking around, eating and living and building on the outside surface of a giant spinning spherical water world space ball. And what I've come to know, understand, and accept that Physical observable reality contradicts that. They'll show you a globe with water curving for 25,000 miles in circumference all the way around the outside of that ball. Okay? But when we go to the beach at the ocean, the horizon is always level and the water is always flat on its surface. It, when there's wind that makes waves, then it, it gets choppy. Or if there are strong currents within the water, the surface can get choppy too. But that is part of seeking and maintaining its level. When it's level, it's maintain, maintaining it. And when the water's choppy, it is constantly seeking its level. And you can pour water in a cup, a bowl, a sink, a tub, a pool. And water is always level on its surface. And we use bubble, bubble levels that employ water to show level. There are so many things in observable reality that contradict what they show us. The stuff they show us is either an animation or a, 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 a pulp of paper molded into a ball. And it's not what we see in everyday life. The, these fantastical things they tell us are either so far away up in the sky occurring which contradict what we see things do on the earth like they say way up in the sky 60, 60 plus miles 60 to 250 miles up that there is gas that can contain itself and stay in one place with no container and that it will not fill the available volume of a vacuum but on earth Anyone with an IQ over 99 knows for a certain fact that when gas and oxygen come into contact with a vacuum, mind you, the puny vacuum chambers we make, the gas and oxygen always go into that vacuum. And it all occurs on the ground at sea level where they say gravity is stronger. And they say it decreases with altitude. You weigh less on a mountain and you'd weigh less 20 times higher 65 miles high and 250 miles where they say true outer space begins. The exosphere, there's a thin imaginary line where the, the thermosphere and exosphere 
exists directly next to, surrounded by and within, an infinite vacuum universe, and the gas and oxygen stay put, it contains itself, and it does not go into the infinite vacuum, billions and billions of light years wide. And that, my friends, is why the flat earth is the phenomenon it is. It will not go away, and it will show people the truth more and more every day. And hundreds turn into thousands, thousands turn into millions, and if the earth somehow gets to continue and we don't all kill ourselves, millions will turn billion millions will turn into billions of people who know the truth. And sooner or later there will be a paradigm change of a group of people who no longer are going to instantaneously believe and accept theory that cannot be demonstrated. We will believe what can be demonstrated and what physical reality shows us that we can acknowledge and verify with our senses that God gave us. These atheist liars want you to ignore your God-given senses that keep you safe, either to take flight or stand your ground and fight to preserve your life or your well-being, or the well-being of those around you. Okay, they want us to kick those to the curb and instantaneously believe that the ground we stand on is spinning 1,038 miles an hour, which is faster than a mediocre bullet. And we feel nothing. <laughs> and gas and oxygen have two behaviors. They behave this way on Earth and fill the vacuum, but... 200 miles up in the sky, they do not fill the vacuum. And oh, by the way, gravity it decreases in strength with altitude. So the higher you go, gravity weakens. Do you see how all this stuff contradicts reality, observable reality, and is fantastical? And they cannot demonstrate gas and oxygen. They cannot show us gas and oxygen staying in one place without a container. Okay. Like the air in this room, if I open the window, the air is going to go and disperse out the window in all directions. I can keep the air in here relatively, most of it. There are seals that are, it's not perfectly sealed, I can feel a draft. But the only way you can keep gas and oxygen, and oxygen is a gas, the only way I can take oxygen in a fixed manner from one room to the other is in a can, a chamber, or a tank. We force it in. Okay, the earth we live on is a contained environment. Okay, there's no way that whatever is above our sky, our blue sky, that it could be an infinite vacuum universe. Do you know why they call that thing there a vacuum? Okay, it's not happenstance. They call it that. In reality, they're mocking you. Vacuum suck up the breeze. And that's actually what a vacuum does. And when you see a vacuum chamber with its seal released, gas and oxygen whoosh, get sucked into it. And it, it sounds like it, and it looks like it's getting sucked in. But universities and schools will tell you, no, vacuums are the absence of air. They don't do anything. And it's the gas and oxygen outside of the vacuum that acknowledges there's a vacuum and fills it and flows into it. You know, it's also stupid. It's unbelievable. You can get a suction cup, put it against a piece of glass, push the air out, and it'll suck to the glass window. And they'll say, no, it's the outside pressure, the outside air, pushing that suction cup against the glass. And you can hang any manner of piece of paper behind that suction cup, and no pressure will blow that paper on or near that suction cup. It is the vacuum within the suction cup sucking to the glass. And yes, you need air to create a vacuum. Okay, a suction cup will not work in a vacuum because there's no air to push out of the suction cup to create another vacuum. That's why things expand in a vacuum. Plastic toys will look like they're someone's blowing air into them and they're getting bigger. That's because they're being pulled on 
in every direction. We are lied to about vacuums. I don't really need to get into that. I got video proven vacuums suck. But the bottom line is that when gas and oxygen come into contact with any vacuums we make, they fill it. They go into that vacuum immediately. And it's just so funny that in nature, on earth, there are no natural vacuums. Okay, we have to create them. And when you create a vacuum, you need a container. Okay, you need four walls or a contained environment to suck the air out of. Everything they tell us is absurd and ridiculous. If gravity were real, if we were truly on the outside surface of a ball, gravity would be a trillion times more real than electricity. Okay, I don't want to go get my... My, my stunner and show you a current of electricity in your eyeballs so you can see. But gravity would be a trillion times more demonstrable, detectable, and exhibit in presence and substance of itself than electricity and magnetism combined. You could turn on every electrical device, radio, hair dryer, TV, computer. You could turn them all on in the whole world simultaneously and that electricity would not be doing 1% of what they say gravity is doing every second. Pulling every person, place, and thing. And everything is every grain of sand, uh, particle of dirt, blade of grass. Pulling it, curving it, or holding it back to the center of the earth. And how? They can't tell you. They can't tell you what gravity is because they've never identified or detected gravity itself to then isolate and study so they got to tell you however and it's real funny that they say if we are to be honest because they rarely are however if we are to be honest we don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way and that's because they cannot detect or identify it to then isolate it and once you isolate it you can study it they can't do that, and that's why they don't, they don't know what it is itself in any fundamental way. But the indoctrination begins when they tell you we only know how it behaves. I don't know anything about computers, but call me and I'll help you fix yours. I know how they behave. That is illogical. It is ignorant. And this, that, that would be a phenomenon if gravity is a force of attraction that exists between any two masses or bodies then I could, I could put two objects one inch together and they would attract each other and I could show that. But that does not happen. So therefore, it cannot be a, 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 a force of attraction that exists between any two bodies because each body, if, if, if they were going to attract each other, they would need a current, a field, a wave, a beam, a ray, or a particle to interact with each other, to pull each other together. And there's no device or instrument on the earth that can directly detect, identify, or isolate any such attraction. Cavendish, gravimeters, they acknowledge these two experiments. And they still tell you, however, if we are to be honest, we don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way. <coughs> Cavendish is only an alleged effect or result of gravity. It is not gravity itself. They are not directly detecting gravity itself per any current field, wave, beam, ray, or particle. They're just setting up a couple balls and saying they get closely, they, they attract each other. And the experiment has to be highly controlled. Okay, no, no wind or air, just a whole lot of what they want to call variables. Okay, no, that's not what they're saying here. They're saying it's a force of attraction that exists between any two masses, bodies, or particles. That can't be demonstrated. Okay, they, they do their little parlor trick Cavendish, but in the real world, that can't be demonstrated, and they know it. And they're lying and mocking you people. And unbeknownst to you, gravity is a god to these people because they say it assembled every star, planet, moon, our sun, the earth. After the Big Bang, 
And you must have faith in it. It is not a God. It is a made-up word, made-up nonsense to get you to believe, to ignore what you actually see in the real world. These people are liars who've sold their souls to the devil himself.